Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of The Weekly Sting. I'm your host, Joe Hutzler. And before we get to our first guest, as we do each week, we tell you about our social media accounts. We want to remind you about those because we do have a very busy weekend coming up with our fall teams, and you can follow along with their progress in any number of those accounts on your screen. Now let's bring in our first guest of the show today, and that is volleyball's own Amanda Wrightson. Amanda? Thank you for uh, for stopping by. Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, last night, a big win for you all in terms of continuing the streak. Three straight wins for volleyball, all in the ODAC. What is the team, how is the team clicking right now? What's something that you've seen as a senior especially that maybe you weren't seeing in the beginning of the year? So the team is clicking really well. We're working a lot on playing together because that's uh, something that's really important in volleyball because everything that everyone else does determines what you do next in the game. So we're just really focusing on trying to make sure we're playing together and it's been working for us. Um, In the beginning of the season, we kept saying that, but it wasn't really panning out. And recently it's really been working for us. Now, when you play a team like Hollins, obviously they're not as skilled as a Virginia Westland or a Washington and Lee. So how important is it for you guys to do your job early and allow those freshmen and sophomores that don't see the floor very much some time to come in and get some reps as well? Yeah, so that's really important for us to truly play our game when we're playing teams like that because it's really kind of like a moment for us to show what we're good at and to show what Lynchburg Volleyball is all about. So in more challenging games, you have to work harder to try and get the points, but in games like last night, it's really about showing what we can do. You mentioned what Lynchburg Volleyball is all about. As a, as a senior, if you were to uh, have to sell the program to someone, say it's a recruit, you know, what would you tell them Lynchburg Volleyball really is all about? Well, I would say Lynchburg Volleyball is about building on what you have already learned about volleyball and then also coming together as a team. So we're all pretty close and we like to hang out with each other, you know, do dumb things together. So we're (laughs) friends with each other on and off the court. And I think that that's really important in the game of volleyball. And I think that's something that drew me to this team when I first came here. And it's still that atmosphere as a senior. You mentioned off the court, obviously, for yourself as a senior, uh, you're hoping that off the court come June is a job uh, for you. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Once you walk across the stage, you've done a lot with field experiences when it comes to your getting your teacher teaching degree, uh, working at the elementary level. Is that the level you want to stay at once you graduate? Yes. So I'll get my license. It'll be from kindergarten to sixth grade. I definitely like that level. I like the younger kids. I would probably prefer to be between maybe kindergarten and third grade, Mm -hmm. but any job is a job, so. Well, that's true, that's yes. the right mindset to have. Yes. <laughs> what about that age group do you like? Because I've talked to n- numerous uh, students here and the majority of them like to go or look at middle school, high school ages as opposed to the younger ones. What attracts you to that youth uh, of America, if you will, when it comes to teaching? So what I like about younger kids is that they're usually pretty like lighthearted and happy to be places and so especially with school by the time you get to middle school a lot of kids don't really like school they don't want to learn the things that you're trying to teach them right and kindergarten through third even fifth grade they think everything you're teaching them is fascinating and that's something that drew me to teaching as a career because that's something in my life I've always wanted to learn new things even now so that's what I like to see in the kids. Yeah, some, try and build that more. Some days that it's you could just give them a bottle of glue and yeah. they, they would be fascinated by that for a little while. Yeah. Uh, when you look back on the things that led up to you wanting to teach, was there a specific moment? Was there a time where you thought, you know what, not only am I interested, but I think I would be good at it as well? Um, I mean, I've grown up around it. My mom's a teacher. Um, she teaches seventh grade English, but I think that I just always have kind of related to people who are younger than me. Even like now, I tend to build more relationships with the freshmen and things like that Mm -hmm. as I get older. And I just, I've always been, like I said, into learning. So those two things together really. 
just drew me to it. Something else interesting uh, with you off the floor is uh, your heritage. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that you actually have a, a family background from Denmark and Norway. Can you tell us more about yeah. that? Yeah, so my mom is a first generation American. Her dad is directly from Denmark and her mother is from Norway. They came over here when they were in their 20s, 30s, met here and got married. But um, my grandmother, we call her Mormor, that means um, mother's mother in Norwegian. So she actually um, still owns the home that she grew up in when she lived over there. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, so one of her cousins or something like that takes care of the house. Okay, okay. So how does that, for, your, for you, when you look at your family history, I mean, is there uh, any moments of, of pride? I mean, how do you kind of make sure that you still recognize that part of your, your family heritage? Well, we, um, especially with the Norwegian side, because my grandfather is no longer living, mm -hmm. but my grandmother is, she just turned 82, we do a lot of cultural things with the Norwegian. So we, my family attends a Norwegian Christmas party every year with a bunch of local people who are also Norwegian. Um, we have, like, um, before dinner, or no, after dinner we say thank you for the food in Norwegian and mom responds, you're welcome. And then, yeah, just like a lot of things like that. I've always been interested in it as well. Mm -hmm. Tried to learn some things, but my grandmother speaks the language, my mom does not, so okay. I don't know as much. Right, is, is the Norwegian Christmas the same time of year? Yeah, it's the okay. same. They just um, tend to celebrate more on Christmas Eve than Christmas Day oh, like really? they do here, yeah. They, do they do gifts on Christmas Day, or they do that on Christmas Eve? So, what we do in my family is we go to my grandmother's house and we do family presents on Christmas Eve, and we do like the big dinner and everything on Christmas Eve. And my mom said when she was growing up, they did everything on Christmas Eve. So, like oh, within okay. their house, they did their gifts. Right. But for me, we did like from Santa in the morning at my house. Right, you still did that. Yes. The American right because piece. my dad is. All American. <laughs> <laughs> All American dad, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, speaking of gifts, um, we probably are going to get some tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we share the same birthday. Yes. So we do. Amanda and I are born on the September 29th. Um, I'm a little bit older than Amanda <laughs> is. Um, but did you ask for anything specific that uh, you're hoping to get tomorrow? I did not. I like to be surprised. I don't uh, really have any specific things I want. I just want something that somebody thought. I might okay. enjoy. So hopefully all of your friends were paying attention yeah. <laughs> all year long so that when her birthday <laughs> comes around, she gets some really cool uh, gifts. Well, yeah. we're appreciative of your time uh, here on the show and hope you have an awesome birthday. Thank and, you, you uh, too. Good luck the rest of the way with volleyball. Thank you. That's going to do it for the first segment. When we come back, we'll talk to Kayla Copeman of Field Hockey on the Weekly Sting. Welcome back, everyone, to this week's edition of The Weekly Sting. Before we get to our first, or our next guest, I beg your pardon, let's talk about the Hornet trivia question. And this week, we are going to relate it to field hockey. And here's the question. Who recently crossed the 100 points mark in their Hornet career? I just gave you a hint, so you have to go to the roster really quick and see who maybe that is. Or if you were paying attention this week, you would know. One person who I'm sure knows is to my right, and that is Miss Kayla Copeman. Kayla, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, we won't make you answer the question because I know you know what it is, yes. but we do want to talk about the game last night mm -hmm. at Washington and Lee, a comeback that was fruitful until overtime, so a 4-3 loss in OT, but you guys were down early 3 nothing. 
take me through that moment of adversity when you that third one goes in obviously you know coach wants to talk to you guys and make some adjustments um, how did you guys as players make sure that when you were talking to one another you still kept it positive and didn't just fold it up and uh, get out of there with a you know a bad loss um I think the biggest thing was at halftime kind of just trying to regroup and focus on the things we needed to work on and just be positive like you said um, it's always hard being down in halftime because you know even if you're down 1-0 you realize you have two goals to even mm -hmm. win the game right so um, but it showed that you know being down 3-0 and three at halftime we have you know we can bounce back and I was very proud of the team yesterday because I mean in the second half we had one goal back to back two goals and then next thing you know we're three and three and mm -hmm. going into overtime and it just so shows we have a lot of resilience and perseverance mm -hmm. and that we didn't stoop down and fall apart and just keep going downhill in the second half. We brought it back up and showed them that we're here to fight and we're not going down without a fight. And you scored on a penalty corner, yeah. which yeah. is a nice relief yes. as well after going the whole season uh, without scoring one. Uh, Coach uh, Smith, she was very happy yes. uh, about that. Uh, for you, there was an adjustment made to move back to defense mm -hmm. um, and play behind the ball essentially, mm -hmm. but you come away with two goals. So can you explain to me how that works, how you end up playing defense, but you actually end up scoring more than you did if you were playing forward? Mm -hmm. um, so they had me at left mid for the second half, which um, there was a bunch of adjustments that we made, which was also a great positive thing mm -hmm. for us because even though a bunch of us were playing in different places, we still kept the ball rolling and we right. came back and um, fought for it. Um, but so I was on a mid and um, for penalty corners I'm actually an inserter so even though I am playing more defensively I still go up for the um, penalty corner and my job was to get the deflection in off of Nikki's hit okay. or off of across the circle so I just kind of clean anything up on the post and did it twice so <laughs> if it wasn't for Nikki then that wouldn't have happened. Okay but well, it's certainly a team effort regardless. Yes for uh, sure for and sure. Certainly in a, in, a, in a game like that. Last thing I'll ask you in relation to that is you kind of touched on it in terms of knowing now as a team that you can be in those moments and you can still come back from those uh, adverse moments even in a loss is there truth to the team growing more in that particular uh, situation again you don't you want the win at the end of the day but mm -hmm. Are you a more dangerous team now because of what you learned yesterday? Oh, for sure. And I mean, I think that's one of our things this season is um, we've you know lost three games so far. And nobody likes losing, but we have had a tough schedule. And that's what we have to keep reminding ourselves is that we are playing very tough teams. And so keeping up a fight with them, and even if you know we're losing four to three in overtime, that's still, I mean, we came back three to zero. and. It shows us a lot about ourselves and how we can persevere as a team together and fight through that adversity. Um, and so there's a lot to learn and we have so much potential and we look back on our losses as well as our wins to see what we needed to fix and what we could have done better. And it is a lot of a learning process throughout that, um, but it doesn't put us down or you know crush our confidence. It builds us up. So right. Still way too early for that anyway. Yes. Oh, yeah. I haven't even oh, got yeah. to October yep. yet. Uh, speaking of learning, mm -hmm. as a uh, chemistry major, you know, you're learning things that I can probably never wrap my head around. Um, do you have a, a, an idea of what maybe you want to do with that? I, I think I heard you were kind of on the fence now as mm -hmm. far as where you want to eventually end up with that degree. Yes, so for the longest time I wanted to be um, a dentist. Um, so, and then as I've gotten older and gotten deeper into chemistry, there's just a lot of things that I'm like really interested in, in chemistry specifically. Um, and so I'm thinking getting a PhD in chemistry. Um, most of the time they actually pay for you to do that at whatever school you choose to go to, and then they'll pay you to teach a class. So it's kind of like, okay. why not? That sounds like a good deal to me. <laughs> so I'm just kind of just seeing where it takes me. Mm -hmm. I'm usually a planner, so that freaks me out. Uh -huh. But um, I'm just gonna go with the flow and see where it takes me, and you know, see what I can do. And um, I definitely want to help people, though. So whatever it may be in the medical field or anything, you know, something with chemistry for sure. But. Okay. At least you got that much. Yes. So you know you're gonna stay with. Yes. That, that's important as a junior, mm -hmm. uh, especially. Uh, what are some things that you enjoy away from school, or even just away from field hockey? I know you gave us some some photos of 
uh, being with your teammates, you know, mm -hmm. hiking, and, and obviously family is a big deal to you. So if you were, if you could choose anything to do that wasn't school related or field hockey related, mm -hmm. where would you want to go or what would you want to do? Um, it would definitely be somewhere outside, um, something like adventurous, um, either fishing or um, dirt bike riding or hiking. Right. Um, I love the beach, absolutely love the beach, so laying okay. on the beach is fine with me too. Um, but yeah, doing something with friends and family and just quality time mm -hmm. and being outside and just enjoying fresh air really well and you mentioned friends and obviously i brought up the the teammates mm -hmm. that, that you obviously go and do those things with too uh has that experience been what you thought it might be as far as having teammates that are actually friends off the field too i mean has that been what everything you would hoped it had been or has it exceeded your expectations um it is by far exceeded my expectations um when i go home i'm actually pretty lonely because my best friends are here and we're all in different states um but i'm lucky because mallory um i've roomed with her the past two years we're living together again this year. We actually live like 30 minutes apart. I've known her since ninth grade of high school. Wow. So we've been best friends since then. And there's um, a few other girls that are like my closest best friends. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we'll be best friends for life. And <laughs> so it's nice. But yes, it's definitely exceeded my expectations. They're great people to have mm -hmm. in your life. And I'm very, very lucky to have them. So That's always good to hear. Yes. Um, listen to that, recruits. That's always good. <laughs> um, last thing I'll get to is your fun fact which was that you're half canadian yes um had no clue about that so your mom is from canada mm -hmm. right is that is that what a, where at in canada um saskatchewan canada and that is west that is smack dab in, in the, the middle, middle? Okay. right above north dakota okay okay mm -hmm. so do you go there do you have a chance to go back to canada yes i've been like once a year my whole life um we typically go in the summertime um, it's very gorgeous there. I'm um, sure. In Saskatchewan, there's a, a lot of nothing. <laughs> it's like <laughs> countryside. You'll drive 30 minutes till you get to another town. Uh, town, but that's what I like most about it is it's so simple mm -hmm. yet so beautiful. And um, we go there and we literally every single day just spend time together. We'll sit outside all day long and just have cookouts or do this or that and just catch up. And it's I love it there. I that's really do. A really nice break from mm -hmm. all the hustle and bustle. Oh, yeah. and going to class and, and all that too mm -hmm. so that's awesome and one more thing you said um dual citizenship are you serious about that yeah no really? i'm serious i might as well well as often as you, uh, I mean, oh, you yeah. go all, and then once you graduate you may go back yeah even more who knows mm -hmm. that's really cool well we'll keep an eye on that and <laughs> um and happy that that we could bring that information out and mm -hmm. happy you could join us on the show today good luck this weekend thank you so much big game coming up for you guys in the thank conference you. and um we'll follow you along Thank Thanks, you. Kayla. We come back here on the Weekly Sting. We will talk to Katie Waring of Women's Soccer. <laughs>
this year you're back you started four games mm -hmm. uh, i think you've played in just about all of them at least for a little bit mm -hmm. what's it been like to finally get back on the field it's not practiced it's not scrimmage it's actually four wins and losses um it's been really great it's been almost like a dream come true because during this whole process you know the main goal is to get back on the field so it's been everything that I've hoped that it's been of course I'm hoping for like a goal but <laughs> I also know that it's going to take some time to just get adjusted back to playing soccer since it has been two years but I'm excited just to be out there and to be with my team so I'll tell you one thing when we did the highlights this morning on the Daily Buzz your uh you getting at least inside and getting the ball over to Sarah for that first goal. I mean, I was impressed with your footwork, so I think it's coming along. Uh, for yeah. you, when did you know you were back at full speed? And when did you have the opportunity to say, okay, when I walk off this field, I'm going to feel like I, I gave everything I had and there's no more issues with my, you know, my lower body. I, I feel 100% right now. I think it was probably this summer when I was in rehab. Um, my, I've been playing around and my um, physical therapist, he was great. I couldn't ask for anyone better and he really prepared me the best I could and really slowly worked me back into things like, you know, passing first, then shooting and then getting adjusted to it. And I could tell a huge difference between, you know, my first surgery and my second, just in myself, the way I prepared myself better, like getting stronger and mostly it's just confidence. You know, yeah. just knowing like, you know, I can go out there and I can do it. And that played a huge role. I've always thought that was interesting. One of the most interesting things about coming back from injury for an athlete is it's largely mental. I mean, if you believe you can get better, then you will get better. And, you know, the, the physical part will take care of itself. So mm -hmm. that that seems like to, that's a trend among those that at least come back and feel good about it. As far as the team is concerned, obviously not happy with what happened here. Last time you guys were on this field behind us. But... Mm -hmm. Win last night on the road in the conference. You know you're, you're back on the winning uh, streak. What was it like in the locker room? We know what Coach Olson had to say to us after the game on Saturday. But what was practice like on Monday? What was practice like on Tuesday? I mean, what was being said to make sure that you went out to or went up to Harrisonburg and you took care of business? Um, it was mostly just getting our minds straight because I'm pretty sure everyone on the team knows that we have the capabilities of beating anybody. We definitely have the talent. So it's basically you know, all in our mind and making sure we know that we can do it. And it was mostly just making adjustments. Like when we're up 2-0, we need to like make adjustments on the field of, you know, maybe not playing dangerous balls to the back and just being smarter soccer players and making sure that like we can finish the game off. So. Do you, when you look at the team overall, do you feel like the the team you have on the field now, the one you start with, the, the uh, ladies that were in that first half, even last night, like you, you found that group that can be um, the main group moving forward and you, you've accomplished that goal of figuring out who needs to be on the field these times and who is going to lead us when it's 2 nothing, and make sure that we don't fall back, that we continue to be aggressive. Yeah, I do think so. I think specifically speaking from forwards, we're trying this new formation where there's four forwards and mm -hmm. we really just weave in and out of each other and I think we've really figured that out within the past couple of weeks and it's work to our advantage um, and also speaking from like midfield and defense like they've really stepped it up and I think we have a really strong team moving forward so well going to as we always do off the field let's talk about Katie wearing that doesn't wear a uniform um, for you you'd like to be a surgeon someday and I asked you I was like what kind of surgeon you boom you gave me two answers so first tell the audience what those answers are and then why what's the the draw to going to school that long, first mm -hmm. of all, because a lot of us don't want to do that, uh, yeah. and, and then to be involved that intricately with the human body. Yeah, um, so I chose to be a surgeon, and obviously my surgeries had a great influence on that. And after going through the process, and I just thought it was amazing. But the thing that really drew me was my last surgeon. And um, I actually had the chance to shadow him this summer and look at a couple ACL surgeries and shoulder surgeries. Wow. And actually a knee replacement. So, and all of that was just, you know, like beyond my mind. It was definitely something that I could see myself pursuing and something that is definitely worth spending a lot of years more in school. And just the impact that he had on me that I would love to do that to anyone that I could in the future and yeah. have that great impact. You have personal experience yeah. uh, as well, whether you want, wanted to or not. Uh, I'm sure that that played, that played a big role. Well, we're going to uh, put you to the test because obviously you're going to be a surgeon. You have to be smart. Yeah. Um, and so we're going to play a game with you this week. It's going to be called, Whose Face Is This? 
and we are going to bring in our assistant uh, Tyler Novak with the sheets. Mr. Novak, thank you very you. much. Okay. It is for you. Okay. For you. For her to guess yours. He guesses yours. Just so it's clear. Okay, so. She's um, guessing those. Right, but she's going to see this answer on the back. No, she's going to hold it up like this. You're going to hold it up like that. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You got it? Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we have 10 sheets of paper per person with a, someone's face on it. And I have to show the first card, and Katie has to tell me who that is. We have one minute apiece to guess as many of the 10 right as possible. Obviously, if we get all 10 of them, great. You can pass and come back uh, if you need to do that as well. Okay. All right, so since you're the guest, I'm going to show you the cards first. Okay. And you're going to have to guess, all right? Okay. I think you've already seen this first one since I flashed it up, <laughs> but that's okay. okay. All right, are we ready? Somebody have a timer? Anybody have a timer? Mr. Rue, thank you so much. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Uh, George Clooney. Yeah. We're going to throw these on the ground. Uh, I have no idea. No idea? You want to pass or just Yeah, pass. Okay. Next. Um, I don't know that one either. Oh, my goodness. We're stumping her. Serena Williams? Yes. Uh, Bill Clinton? Yep. Nick Jonas? Ah, now she's on a roll. She's got the youth. Christopher Columbus? Yeah! All right, Katie. Uh, Tom Cruise. Yep. Halle Berry. Yep. Oprah. Yep. All right, back to these two. Yeah. Come on. I don't know. Come on. I don't right. know. What yeah. about what about this guy? He looks kind of familiar, but no, nothing. Nothing. No. All right, we're gonna end with eight then. So this, this is little Dicky, oh, right wow. here. Yeah, okay. And this, I'm really disappointed. This is really? Walt Disney. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is the man shame. responsible for Mickey Mouse. So there, there's that, Katie. All right, well, eight is still pretty good, and I, I'm going to have a tough time, I'm sure, uh, in, in doing that. So good luck with the, the papers. Um, that was interesting. But we're, it's the first time doing this, so we'll make improvements for the next time, okay? All right, so I got the timer. All right, we got the shot of her with the card. Okay. And show me the front. Don't show me the back one. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Uh, uh, um, Rhett from uh, that good mythical morning show. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, Meek Mill. Meek Mill. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. Steve Jobs. I have an Android. I don't have an Apple. Sorry, Steve. Pass. Oh, no. Marilyn Monroe. Uh, Anne Frank. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Come on, flip them faster. Um, Huggy Bear. Bob Huggins. Wow. Uh, Ronaldo. He only needs one name. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Go to the other one. Um, Tyler Joseph from, um, from um, what's the band? Yep, that was What's there. the band? 21 Pilots. 21 Pilots, yes, yes. So I got it in time? You didn't get the last one, no, But I got nine. Oh, you did yep. get nine. Sorry, Katie. That's all right. I, I, had, to, I had to put you to shame on, on that one. Uh, I just can't believe you didn't get Walt Disney. Come on, Walt Disney. All right, we all learned something today, at least. That's what Walt Disney looks like. Not now. He's in the ground or something, but um, but that, that is Mr. Walt Disney. Well, that was fun. That was, yeah, a, was. a little heart racing, pounding action going on um, in a good way to end the show. Yeah. Katie, thank you very much. You did a great job on your thank first you. time. And good luck the rest of the way with women's soccer. Stay Thanks. healthy. Thanks. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon on the field. Yeah, I just want to wish you a happy early birthday. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Happy birthday. Every year. Happy Every birthday, birthday to you. Yeah. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday to you. Yay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Yes, tomorrow is my birthday. If you'd like to send me anything, you can send it to the athletic office at 1501 Lakeside <laughs> Drive. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Katie, 
Thank you for uh, helping them out yes. and for helping me out today. Really Thank appreciate you. it. And uh, good luck this weekend. Thank you. All right, that's going to do it for us this week on The Weekly Sting. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Remember, it's a great day to be a Hornet, and we are One Nation.